Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast today. Jake Clark, John Schneider today. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the Peachy Printer today. I know they had uh, talked about a little bit about the Peachy Printer last week, and it's been what now? Two years? Three years? Uh, so it's been about two years. They had a, and I don't, I don't remember when in 2013 they had a Kickstarter campaign, but in... So just a, a little background on the Peachy Printer. So you might have heard about this. It's a $100 uh, 3D printer. And when it came out on Kickstarter, again, we're always pretty skeptical about Kickstarter stuff, but this one looks like it's actually going to be able to, del to deliver for, the, uh, for that $100 price point. So when they launched the Kickstarter, the way that it worked is it was a resin-based 3D printer, so an SLA 3D printer, where when a UV light hits it, then it cures the plastic, and then moves up another layer, cures it, you know, cures it, keeps going. So the way that it worked, how it would raise and lower the level of the resin is it actually would drop, it had resin that floated on top of water, and so to raise the height of the resin, it would actually have a little controlled water droplet that would yeah, go down actually, and raise it up, and that's how it controlled the z-axis. And the way that you sent commands to this was using the uh, the headphone jack on your computer. So instead of hooking it up via USB, having a bunch of electronics that would control the uh, control the mirror rotation, which would aim the laser, it would do all of the do all of this with a sound card. Now, fast it, forward two years. Right. So it's still at that hundred dollar price point, but the form factor has changed quite a bit. So it's still the same basic principle where it, uh, you know, it cures the, cures the resin. Um, but now instead of having, I don't know, instead of having it controlled by the sound or ha by the headphone jack, it's now hooked up via USB. So it does have its own circuit for controlling the mirrors. So it still uses a UV laser to cure the, cure mm -hmm. the resin. Yeah, because it was really interesting when, when they came out with it. Because uh, the guy had the idea in 2012, I believe it was, mm -hmm. um, where he got this idea of, of doing this. He's a Canadian guy and just kind of wanted to, to dabble in the 3D printing realm. And it was really cool because every little drop, it would actually cross. And he made all this out of household items. Yeah. So he actually had a couple paper clips where the drop would actually go through the two paper clips. It would connect the circuit. And then uh, in the software, it would tell it to, you know, that it's going up another layer. And it was really interesting um, because the first product he actually showed in the kit in the older Kickstarter was this little tiny control box. Now what they have is this snap together frame that looks kind of like a kind of looks like a weird quadcopter looking looking deal because yeah. it's got some legs and you you set it onto uh, two different jars. And the neat thing is you can actually change uh, how big your build capacity is based on what jars you use. Right. Um, and I think it I think it uh, uses maker juice. Um, so it, it, it uses something right called, it uses something called, what it is it, peachy, peachy juice, yeah, it's, or peach it's, juice. Because in there, because in the um, team that they had, the guy that made Maker Juice is actually part of that team. Yeah. So. so that's one of the cool things is that not only is the printer low cost, $100, but the uh, the resin is $60 per liter. I think if you look at uh, like the Form Labs Form 1, that resin is about $100 per liter. So the resin cost is a little bit lower. Now, the downside to uh, to the peachy printer is it is very much a put it together yourself kit. It's a hundred dollar three D printer. Yeah, and so it, it doesn't come with the jars that you need to use for the for the resin. I'm sure that they'll have that and they'll you know they'll sell that as an add on. Yeah. But it's just the think of it as you have one base jar that has the resin in it. Then you have another jar or it's really something. It's a cylinder with straight edges and that holds the printer like the actual mirrors, the laser, uh, the galvanometers, all that stuff. It holds that up above the resin jar. Yeah, because it still does the drip system. Yeah. And the uh, the thing with it is, so it is a hundred dollar printer. So with the prints that you look at, um, it's kind of remarkable. It's it's kind of two sides. One, if you're used to high end three D printers or or uh, like the Form Lab stuff, it's not really gonna. Co it comes decently close, uh, but it's, not. It's really. I mean, surface finish. For, surface finish yeah. is, is pretty rough. So it, it it doesn't come close to your high end high end machines. But um, it, it's for the hundred dollar price point. It's actually a pretty decent part. I mean, it's right. not. They they have a example video where they're actually shooting a rocket off, and I mean, it's just things like that. So now you can get you know your students with something that you can have a little bit more accuracy with. Not a great print print service, but for you know something to have in the in the classroom, it would be kind of an interesting way to go. 
um, if you're a little bit more an adventurous educator. Yeah. It doesn't se- doesn't seem like a terribly durable material. It seems it seems like a very hard, brittle material. But mm. again, when you're talking $100 for the printer, $60 for the material, I mean $160 total. Then maybe if you throw in some of the throw in some of the other stuff like the containers to house everything, oh, 200, 200 bucks. Yeah, so 200 bucks. If if you haven't done any 3D printing before, this might be a good way to get into it. Just know that it's not going to be it's not going to be a super polished interface. It's, it's not, not like going to be formed labs. No, no, and it, it's not. Gray. Well, or that, or even even an FDM style printer. It's not going to be like taking a Lulz butt mini out of the box and being able to plug and play and have and be up and running, making really good prints in 15 minutes. Well, maybe it takes only 15 minutes, but it's just not. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be as smooth of a process, but given the price, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. I mean, it's the greatest price price point for for an SLA type machine, um, because typical other machines range from two thousand on the low end all the way up to hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, but and, it, and it, it'll be interesting. And I think you are going to have a size limitation just due to the strength of the light strength of the laser. If you're going to be having a larger build area, that means you're going to have to have the laser further away so that it can have a decent you know so you, you have that kind of field of view for the laser beam to hit the resin. And I, I, I think you're gonna have a, a realistic max of maybe four inches by four inches. And the stuff that they've made, the stuff that they've printed that seems to be about the largest object is about four inches by four inches. As far as height, height yeah. you have a little bit more, you've got quite a bit more room to work with. But the, the X and Y axis seems to be about maybe four or five inches. Yeah, and we'll, we'll try, and I know they're trying to ship it in, in what, was it uh, so they're, September? They're saying, so this is from an update in April. They're aiming for September and October. But the big thing is that this is a product. They actually have it working. They've demonstrated it working. They've shown the prints that they've created with the printer. So already the Peachy printer is kind of head and shoulders above the majority of Kickstarter printers. It's, it's real. Now when it starts yeah. shipping, that'll really be the true test. But the fact that it, they're using it and it makes physical objects that's huge yeah so we'll try and maybe get our hands on one later this year to give you guys a little bit more i know this is more of uh more of a you know if this or if that and some of the technical specs of the side of it but we'll try and get our hands on one and really give you know a review on it potentially and 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 see how it works and and maybe revisit the peachy printer in a couple months and see how it's doing and um kind of give maybe a little bit of an update as far as that goes i know we're we're going to maybe try and do that with some of the other Kickstarter ones we've talked about is try and get them in here and test them and give our full review. Because I know a lot of these Kickstarters, they are more of a, uh, um, you know, we're only presented with the information we, we, we can we can oh, get at. Yeah. So, so a, a great example is the, the Tico 3D. So at the time that we did that podcast, well, since they've done the podcast, they've put a lot more information on their Kickstarter page. They've done a lot more to explain how they're able to get the cost down. Before, when we were talking about it, they yeah. just said, hey, yeah, we it's some, it is. It's some new, new stuff that we're doing, some non-existing parts, and we're going to be able to make it for less money. For example, they're not using stepper motors. That right there is a huge cost savings. Um, stepper motors aren't exactly cheap. That means you don't have the drivers for the stepper motors. You know, That's the actual circuits that control and tell the stepper motors what to do. That's another cost savings. It's also a power savings It's um, and saves a little bit on heat as well and they've explained their unibody design quite a bit more. So think of it like, I mean, maybe I didn't get this when they said unibody design, but it really is just that whole triangle shape. It's a solid piece of extruded extruded aluminum. So basically they've created a die, put it on an aluminum extrusion system, and it just kicks out this long tube and then they cut it mm-hmm. at the exact height that they need it for. And the uh, the controls for the, for the Delta, so it's a Delta Bot style 3D printer, the controls for the arms actually ride in the rails of that unibody system. So you don't need to have extruded aluminum, I don't know, what would you call that? Like on a Lulz bus? Well, rails, yeah. I mean, it's just, it uses much less aluminum. Still seems to be pretty rigid. I I still don't know how they're making money at $179, but I understand a lot more now how they're keeping once the cost they gave down. Us, once they gave everyone a little bit more information. Well, and either and, and even another thing is the the extruder. So it does. I think it does still use a stepper motor for. It uses a Bowden style extruder. So I don't know if it uses a stepper motor for the drive, 
for the for the, the Bowden extruder. So a Bowden extruder is where you have the motor separate from the actual hot end. So you have the you have the uh, have the drive mechanism on the outside of the printer, and then that way you're able to keep the weight of the extruder really light. And then the way that they've got the the cooling ducts for that, I guess it just you don't need a cooling fan on the extruder either, the way that they designed it. So that right there, you don't need a fan, which is you know five, six, seven dollars, maybe a little bit less if you're buying in bulk. But you also don't need the wiring for it. You don't need a controller for the fan. So they they're using a custom circuit board. They're not using an off-the-shelf. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll just be board. interesting, you know, when when we get one in and really take a look at it and tear it apart and and see what it what it's all about because that's the true testament of how they can get it down to that price point, you know, because that's that's part of you know that's part of the secret of, of manufacturers in especially in uh, stuff like that. They their their secret sauce is how they can their supply chain how can they get the right parts and how they design it and all that so it'll be really interesting to see how the engineers of T of, of Tico um, got it to a price point 170 again I'm gonna echo you I don't think they're making very much money on a hundred seventy dollar printer I mean if you look at XYZ with their Da Vinci there's no way in heck that they're making a lot of money on that I mean so but if, then but then with the Da Vinci you yeah, have materials. you have well you have all of your traditional you have all of your traditional style 3D printing components, like your yeah. rails and all that. But yeah, like you said, they, 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 have, they have a proprietary filament system. Yeah. So and, they make their money not on the printers, but on the materials. They're hoping you're going to come back and, and, and buy right. hundreds and hundreds of, of spools. But so we'll, we'll revisit that. So part of what I, what I was trying to get at is some of these Kickstarters, at the time that they air, um, we're given the information. So if you were watching this two or three weeks later, the information could have changed. So just keep that in mind. Um, and we'll try and update as much as we can and then maybe even get some of these Kickstarter printers uh, out here and some of the newer printers here so that we can actually uh, review them and show them. If you're, if you're a 3D printer manufacturer out there, um, definitely feel free to uh, get in touch with us as far as testing your machine. We'd love to uh, try it out, see how it works, give some feedback, uh, give the public some feedback as far as the machine goes. Uh, I know we're going to be trying to do some, some reviews of some of the uh, newer printers that we're, we're going to be carrying. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Well, that's all we have for this week. <laughs> um, yo, yeah, so this is Blank the Rabbit. Yes. So we don't have, we're still trying to find a name. This is the Freedom Mascot. The only thing that we know is that Rabbit is going to be part of the name. We're not sure if it should be Roger Rabbit, Oliver Rabbit, Steve Rabbit, Stewie Rabbit. I just, I don't know. So we're very open to any naming suggestions. The person who has the best naming suggestion that we pick will get free filament from 3 dom USA. So please throw name com or, uh, throw name ideas down in the YouTube comments or shoot us an email uh, at info at 3 dumusacom or 3 dumusacom Yep, that's correct. So if you have a name idea, send it our way. Uh, but I think that that's all we have for this week. So on behalf of myself, John Schneider, and Jay Clark, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Be alerted whenever we have a new video. If you are listening to us on iTunes, subscribe there. If you just want to follow us on our other social media channels, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, even Google+. So, again... <laughs> Nobody uses Google+. Plus. Well, <laughs> some people do. <laughs> Those few. Uh, anyway, on behalf of myself, John, and Jay Clark, thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs> Little bunny foo-foo. I almost called you John. <laughs> I know you did. Uh... I want to try reprinting this. Print a giant whistle. We only said that in like podcast number eight. I know. <laughs>